Hey, you guys. Like hey. they in the 70s and now getting sued by the electric company. It's <laughs> episode 29 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Yeah, I was going to react to 29, but I was like, it's just going to get worse. Oh, yeah. The numbers are going to be higher. Yeah, I think that is how it works. Oh, I got to stop freaking out at some point. If I remember my numbers correctly, they mostly go up. <laughs> it's almost always up. Hey, we have a, a friend of mine that listens to our show from time to time. Very kind man. Dave Amiot uh, was listening to the episode where we talked about the entertainer. Uh-huh. And then remember, we also talked about how there's the other version of the entertainer. Right. Which I need to do more often in life. I like doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's good times. He said that there's apparently there's lyrics to that song, that one, and that um, George Burns performed them on The Muppets. No kidding. And that apparently they're kind of maudlin. So, <laughs> <laughs> which sounds about right for a George Burns song. Yeah, I don't, he doesn't seem like he would do a lot of upbeat stuff. Well, it's funny because old George oh, Burns. The tune is pretty upbeat. Huh? The tune is very upbeat. Yeah. And I wonder if it has a similar hook to the upbeat tune that Billy Joel wrote. That would yeah. be kind of funny if it's the same sort of deal, but yeah. just old timey. Interesting. Like, um, there's no way to make uh, being an entertainer good news. So I'll just deliver it. Yeah. Well, you know that song, there's no business like show business. Yes. Some of those lyrics, because it's, bah, 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 bah. you guys love it when I do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> some of those lyrics are a bummer. If you think huh. about them, because some of them are like, you know, it's today you were a big success. Tomorrow you're a flop. It's stuff like that. That seems to be the running theme. Yeah. Like it might seem like it's going well, yeah. but eventually you'll die. Yep. The only saving grace of that song is they say, in that song, they make a point of saying, but still you wouldn't change it for a sack of gold, which can sound positive. Because even right. though it can suck, you still wouldn't change it. Or were they even back then familiar with the idea of artists being sick? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, uh, even though you uh, have been offered something better, um, your need for attention yeah. is driving you down a rabbit hole. You will you not do never it. Never escape. Yeah. Or maybe I mentioned this one time, Mr. Saturday Night, best movie about stand-up ever. Never seen it. In my opinion. It's, of course, Billy Crystal. Right. Um, the Billy Joel of acting. I don't know if that's true. But. <laughs> you know, some people forget they like him and then they go, oh, I guess I like him. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's other, oh right. He was in all kinds of good stuff. Yeah. Huh. Well, he's kind of short and weird looking. I think, yeah. I think this holds up. I think this holds yeah, up. It's not bad. He's very New York centric. Yeah. He's a, a, a small Jewish man. Now, this movie, Mr. Saturday Night, captures the desperation of a dude who's number one the desperation of why he did stand up and the desperation of why he will not quit despite mm. being an old man and like there's a scene at the end where he's doing stand up in an old folks home for just old other seniors oh and it's both inspiring and tragic great because at least, because you can tell he's happy. Right. But the, looking at the circumstance, you're like, he shouldn't be happy. No. <laughs> this is a drag. And he's got a long suffering wife. So the, the line I never forget is I made peace with a long time ago that you need the kind of hug only strangers can give. Ooh. It's funny how she's accepted him for who he is. Eerie. Yeah. Eerie. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Did he, he must have written that film? He did. Yeah. Yeah. 
no one would cast you in that. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny. It was based on the first version he did of it was an SNL skit. Oh, because he used to do those weird, like serious sketches. Well, the sketch wasn't that serious. Okay, sketch good. It was an old time insult comic, and it was just an ad for come and see Buddy. His name was Buddy Love, not Buddy Love, because that was Jerry Lewis's character. <laughs> Buddy Young, I think maybe. Maybe. Uh, and it was. Um, people coming out going, it was so great. First he called me fat, and then he called my husband stupid. It was a great show. That was basically the premise. Great. Of he um, basically boiled down the insult comedian to just, just he's just being mean and people are laughing. <laughs> great. But then somehow he made a movie. And that's what our show's about. Alex and Jim, <laughs> talk about movies one of them has seen. <laughs> Uh, that's a great premise. Um, it is a great premise. So we picked, or I picked, uh, I got to pick this time, and I picked Say Goodbye to Hollywood was the song I picked. And Alex, how does that song begin? It goes. And then there's that weird maraca sound. Yes. Oh, yeah, it does have the maraca, which is not part of the original. Not sure if it's a maraca. I don't know what it is. And then uh, Alex has a friend who apparently is well educated about music and, and happened to be uh, I kind of just noodling on a desk. Um, yeah, sound. doing that on a desk. And he had a different song in mind um, that I didn't know. And I, I don't re remember what it was. But apparently, there's a slew of songs that start with that sort of opening. Um, and we discovered last week here on the show live uh that one of them is leader of the pack by the shangri-las yeah and if we remember our trivia uh billy joel himself played piano on a demo that's right for that song i no, guess I not the recorded it, version that we know and love yeah um but i want you know you have to wonder if like Oh, this was my first thing in showbiz. I'm going to harken back to it as I leave Los Angeles. So he could have been doing that. Or, so here's the thing. The challenge was how many songs could we think of? And the answer is not many. But yeah. the first one I thought of immediately, I thought of last week, was Be My Baby by the Ronettes. Oh, uh, sure. It turns out, unbeknownst to me, that's the song everybody else is aping. That's the first uh -huh. one. Great. That was a lucky guess produced by uh, uh, Phil Spector. That's Ronnie right. Spector. Is it Phil? Phil Spector. Yeah. The Wall of Sound. The Wall of Sound guy. And it and I like the song perfectly fine, but this demonstrates that you and I are not musicians because I'm not blown away by it. I, I'm like, uh, I guess at the time it was different. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I've got to contribute to that. But even musicians today are wildly influenced by it and, and they listen to it and hear obviously things I'm not hearing. Or they just recognize what a difficult thing it is to create that kind of perfect production. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know, because uh, Brian Wilson went nuts about the song. Yeah. Now, to be fair, Brian Wilson went nuts about a lot of things. Yeah, he stayed nuts. Yeah. He heard the song and he stayed crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His daughter uh, in an interview said that every morning she would wake up to every morning. <laughs> <laughs> would play that song every day. Wow. Trying to capture that wall of sound, that production, because, you know, and of course, Brian Wilson was a damn genius. Yeah. Among, along with being crazy, he was one of them crazy geniuses or genius crazies. He was good at both, really. Yeah. He was good at being crazy. Yeah. And being a genius. Yeah. 
So, um, so there must be Beach Boys songs. Um, they did a cover of that. Sure. Uh, he didn't do that exactly because he wouldn't have wanted to. He tried to capture it without doing it. Uh, the homage. Yeah. And, and um, apparently he had that drum part just put on a loop and played for hours and hours and hours <laughs> so he could think about it. Great. <laughs> Great. Fucking musicians get to be so weird. Yep. And so, nobody can say anything. Yeah. And if they're not successful, people don't like them. No. I have a friend, not going to say his name. He's a brilliant musician. M musician? I'm drunk. <laughs> He's a brilliant <laughs> musician. Yeah. He's a weirdo. Uh-huh. And he don't make friends. Uh-huh. Had he made it, people would have went, oh, that's fine. He's a weirdo. Yeah, yeah. And he should have made it. He was great, but that also happened. So there you go. That does happen. Yeah. And that's uh, that's why all the show business songs are sad. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, because just being good at it uh, isn't enough. There's no business, no. It's show business. A lot of times they won't pay you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what other examples did you come up with? Uh, none. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh. Yes, I came up with none except for the Shangri-Las thing. Like I said earlier, I started to talk to my friend Eric about it, who is a musician, um, who has seen some success as a musician and knows millions of musicians. And so I started doing the thing and I said, uh, this is from a Billy Joel song. And then he just started making fun of me for liking Billy Joel and not knowing Apparently, if uh, music is popular and well-known, that's bad. The ideal thing is to get rich and famous as a musician and make music that's so good that only dicks can understand it. <laughs> and then lecture you at work or parties. That sounds fucking accurate to the kind of people I've met in my life, so yeah. 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 They're like, what do you mean you've never heard of Wolverine? They were, uh, they had the number six album in 1981. Idiot. <laughs> what? But I know about uh, uh, lots of things. Our friend Graham Elwood, we were at a party one time with, um, I think they only invited people like that. So right. we just a lot of people and whoever we, house we were at, they had bongos and Graham started very, very, Graham does this thing where he'll be at a party and he'll be doing something really sincerely. Uh -huh. And only if you know him, you go, he's making fun of everybody. <laughs> Great. And it's fucking amazing. And yeah. playing the bongos, just such a tool and it, it paid off beautifully with these people going, man, you're getting such a good, and you know, good sound out of there. And they were not kidding. So great. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. What, one of his signature grand moves is to be joking around secretly with people he can't stomach. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So here's another uh, example, Ragdoll. By the Four Seasons. Oh, yeah. Starts exactly like that. Great. And Mary Jo was like, you got to have an example. And she came up with the weirdest example because she was basing it on not the exact production design, but rather the same rhythm, uh -huh. which is Cell Block Tango from the musical Chicago. And wow. I listened to it a couple times. And it does the thing, but <laughs> not with a drum. Oh, with what? Uh, it's partly vocal. It oh. Goes, goes, uh, 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 wow. And I'm like, well, huh. go to an actual singer. Right? Get yeah. actual singing. And there were, and then I thought of then he kissed me. And I'm wrong. I really won't listen to it right now. 
<laughs> that happened a few times where I was like, oh, what about this song? And like, no, it starts entirely differently. Yeah, that's a completely different song. What about this song? Well, wow, that's a Bach piece. What was I thinking? <laughs> What about this song? That's a sculpture. Oh, <laughs> not even a song. What about this song? Uh, this is pizza. Just eat your pizza. <laughs> uh, eat artichoke pizza. If yeah. you get a chance on the 18th and 10th. I asked, so this is, Alex mentioned he had pizza. And this is the question I asked him and he was not offended, which is nice. Because afterwards I thought, that's insane. I go, buddy, I, he said, we're heating up pizza. And I go, you guys got a frozen pizza? Alex lives in New York, but I never have a frozen pizza. Yeah, although we have. There was a pandemic where you weren't, couldn't go outside. Okay. So, there, so we did have some frozen pizza from Trader Joe's. And it's uh, not terrible. I, what's the shortest distance we could walk and get pizza? I think 30 feet. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, Jack's Wife Frida is a restaurant on the corner. I, it is 30 paces from my front door. I think they have pizza. Jay's pizza, Jay's pizza is like uh, 200 yards. So that's like. Now, how far do you have to walk to get pizza you really like? Oh, gosh. 23rd Street. So that's tick, 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 0. 0.4 miles. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a Detroit style pizza place. Yeah. Called uh, Lions, Tigers, and Squares. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And uh, there, there are no chairs. There are only uh, tables. So you have to stand there like an animal and eat it and then leave. And was that always pre pandemic? That's just how that place goes? That's just how they do it. Like we have six of those tall tables and uh, then get out. <laughs> of a huge signed poster of Eddie Murphy from Beverly Hills Cop. Because his character was from Detroit. Oh, yeah, he was. Foley, yeah. right? Yeah, Axel Foley. Axel Foley, that's right. I, uh, the, if I were to walk about 30 miles, I could get good pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, into the ocean, right? You have to walk into the ocean. Yeah. Uh, and like, climb up the side of a cruise ship. There's a place by UCLA that's a New York pizzeria that the guy's from New York and he imports his water. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Great. And it's probably not as good as we think it is, but it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Do you I, like Chicago pizza? I do. I almost feel like it's a different food. Agreed. I think of it as a different food that I also like. Yeah. Uh, not a different kind of pizza. Yeah, well, I remember when I was in Chicago, I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And then I was hadn't been in Chicago in a long time. And then I visited decades later. And, you know, I'm older, my stomach's different. So I was like, oh, I'll get one of those pizzas. I was like, the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, you can't do that after 30. Yeah. Wait, That's why I, everyone leaves Chicago when they turn 30. Yeah, is this a meatloaf on a piece of bread the fuck is it's, it it's, uh, it's a lasagna yeah but someone put graham crackers over the top of it yeah <laughs> it was still delicious but you can't pick up a slice of it no that's a bad sign for pizza yeah that makes it not pizza yeah that, that makes it not pizza i agree i see i think the same thing about uh trader joe sells a pretzel bagel Oh, yeah. And as long as you're committing to the fact that it's not a pretzel or a bagel, it's pretty good. Sure. It's a piece of bread. If they just named it a third thing. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, I've discovered a new uh, thing that I like. Yeah. But now you've discovered two things that you don't have. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Call it a pretzelini. It drives me nuts in New York when places combine stuff. Like there's a, like down the street here, there's like a Korean inspired taco place. And my feeling is always like, this is New York. You don't have to combine. <laughs> there's a Korean place and there's a taco place within a hundred yards of your Korean taco place. Yeah. So I, if I like either of those things, I can break it up into lunch and dinner. I can do three days at one place, three days at the other place. 
I don't need your help consolidating. You could go to one and get a thing and go to the other and get another thing and say, I'm having both things. Yeah, I can do this. I don't even need you. Yeah. I, I can need... walk an extra 50 yards and uh, steal your idea for a restaurant. I'll tell you my favorite dumb taco and then we'll start. Um, <laughs> a, there was a bar I did stand up at called Fenders in Orange County somewhere which I believe eventually got set on fire for the insurance money. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Great. They were slowly going out of business. And they waited. So for a while, if you would like a soda, you don't want a beer, you get a soda, you go, can I get a Coke? And they take the tap out. Eventually they were like, hey, can I get a soda? And they go, no, but we have Mr. Kid. And clearly somebody had gone to Vaughn's because they hadn't paid their distributor. They had cans of Mr. Pitt. Great. And sometimes it was president's choice because they were slowly just <laughs> still trying to stay in business. And then they would have taco night. And it was great because you could, you could drink and eat tacos for free. And initially it was tacos. Mm -hmm. At one point it was lunch meat tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That, and that's probably like the fine, that's like stage four. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you fly the family in. Yep. And I, <laughs> saying your goodbyes. And now I say that I think they probably set it on fire. It sounds like I'm joking. One of the last times I performed there, there was a new addition next to the stage. And, oh. And so you had the stage where I'm performing. And off to the side, it looked like just a giant pile of rags <laughs> that I would describe as oily. <laughs> so, huh. I was grateful they didn't do it while I was performing, so. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. So that someone later would say, like, I did see a pile of oily rags. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the pile of the pile of oily rags uh, opened that night. I think. Yeah, Mary. And then when the when they're the insurance people, he goes, "Well, where do you keep your pile of oily rags?" <laughs> Great. It's so awesome. All, All right. right. So I did pick a song. Which I'm it's true. I remember, I remember that. <laughs> and I picked uh, "Say Goodbye to Hollywood." It's a pretty song. It's a pretty song. We were talking, we listened to it earlier and we're like, the production is super weird on it. Yeah. The voice sounds crazy. There's crazy reverb. It sounds like he's standing five feet away from the microphone a little bit. Yeah. Um, and we were like, is he trying to do the Phil Spector thing? Absolutely. And then it like, also then it becomes a Billy Joel song when it changes. <laughs> of course. It does the little bridge where he's like, this is what I really sound like. <laughs> and now back to the impression I'm doing. Um, uh, a pretty, you know, it's a, I, of course, as a Billy Joel fan who lived in LA for a long time, I would play this song driving around a lot. And it is perfect for that. Yeah. Driving uh, down Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Um, it's per until somebody hears it and looks at you and then you feel like an idiot, <laughs> but otherwise it's great. Uh, one of my favorite experiences, which I've come to love is there's a couple of fast food places I eat out now and then, and there's always, you know, children taking my order. Yeah. And it's funny to get to the front and they hear the music that I'm listening to. And a couple of times, I'm pretty sure they were laughing at me. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Because if it's not Billy Joel, I listen to, so a lot of my go-to is Billy Joel and then a surprising amount of Broadway, because I like Broadway. Sure. And then I know one time they thought, what is he trying to pull? Because I was listening to Miley Cyrus. Because <laughs> I just really like her voice. I like what she does when she covers a country song. And then her dirty songs, I'm like, right on, lady. You talk about that dirty stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't know any Taylor Swift. 
Um, but I do know a lot of uh, persons our age who love her. Yeah. And the music that she does. And one of them is the host of my show that I work on. And he probably wrote that skit then. Yes. He it, wrote more, more than one sketch with her and for her and about her. Um, what it was uh, swiftamine or the medicine you take when you, oh. you like Taylor Swift? Yeah, that I don't know. I couldn't vouch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Leslie Jones was really funny in that. I remember very, she she nailed it. Yeah. Great. Anyway, so this is uh, all about <laughs> Leslie Jones. All right. So it starts out with a little Phil Spector homage. Apparently uh -huh. just an homage because he didn't get sued. Uh, because <laughs> uh, Phil Spector would sue you. That's oh, sure. yeah. I read about that. He'll also do other things later. <laughs> right. It, uh, it escalates. Yeah. Bobby's driving through the city tonight. Oh, oh, this is how we'll do it. I'll read the first one and the chorus, and you just have to think in chorus. We're not constantly reading the chorus. Great. Um, Bobby's driving through the city tonight. Right away, I like that it's a general, it, Bobby is any dude. Yeah. And that seems kind of unique for Billy Joel in that it's the most generic name. It's also a very New York y name. Is it? Oh, yeah, because he, he's calling him Bobby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, didn't even think about it that way. Bobby's driving through the city tonight, through the lights. Nice and evocative. In a sure. hot new rent-a-car. <laughs> Great. Already shitting on Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bobby is clearly showing off, and he's uh, purporting to have money he doesn't have. That's what I'll say. It's a nice three-line summary of Los Angeles. Yeah. Like it's a hot car, it's shiny lights, and it's rented. Yeah. He, he doesn't own that car. <laughs> he joins the lover in his heavy machine. The lover, not his lover. He joins the like the character. <laughs> the Commedia dell'arte character of the lover. <laughs> Maybe. But why does he say the lover? I feel like it's plural in the, when you're listening to it, it joins the lovers. Oh, okay. Like he's going to where all the fucking Okay. Are. So I'm, I'm looking at a set of lyrics and maybe somebody should have put an S there. Okay. And we should say, like, these lyrics are sometimes probably a little wrong that we find <laughs> online <laughs> on Vivo or whatever. Yeah. Whenever you, if you by the way, sometimes I get them from uh, BillyJoel.com and I assume they're more accurate, but I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scene down on Sunset Boulevard. I like it. I like the Sunset Boulevard, you know. I think maybe we talked about this, how Sunset Boulevard and any number of streets in LA that are iconic are just so dirty if you actually come here. You're unbearable. And it's wild to me. It's kind of beautiful in a way that that's how LA works. Yes. Because the illusion of LA from a distance, I mean, Hollywood itself is the result of a broken sign. Right. Um, I love that uh, any show that takes place in LA where they're showing you like lots of B-roll of uh, glamorous LA, it's the same street with the palm trees. Yeah. The perfectly spaced palm trees that I think is one street yeah. that has that and I don't know where it is. And then there was a beach that's sunny. So I don't know when they shot that. Yeah. It is never sunny at the beach. Uh, the marine layer is there 14 months a year. When I first got to LA, I went to the beach and it was really cold. And I was with my friend, Eric Edwards, hilarious dude. And this lady was there in her bikini. And I don't know what, it, it was cold, cold, cold. And she came up and talked to us for some reason. And she seemed perfectly nice. 
And I can be very naive sometimes when she's talking to us, <laughs> talking about what we're doing and what she's doing. And then eventually we parted ways. And uh, I said, I thought she seemed like a nice lady. And Eric goes, she was trying to see if we wanted to pay her to do stuff. I was like, oh. <laughs> and then I thought about all the things she had said, and he wasn't making it up. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm bummed in two ways. I'm bummed that she's cold and having to work like that. And I'm also bummed at my dumb brain that I didn't know what was going on. Then uh, after he told you, did you drop your coffee cup in slow motion? <laughs> Shattered. I did, but then it just kind of rested nicely in the sand. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So I still got my cup. Yeah, I still, got, still got your cup. You can do stuff with that. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. If I'm wide enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, <laughs> horrible. That's fantastic. Um, my favorite part of uh, the first section you just read is heavy machine. Yeah. Which I guess means cool car in oh. 1970. Four? Where are we? It's, yeah, uh, uh, 76. 76, yeah. You are 100% right because I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the kind of car that he's renting is got a lot of chrome. It's a classic American car. It's got that thing that sticks up out of the hood. Yeah. Whatever that's called. What is that called? A uh, Hemi. A Hemi. It might be a Hemi. The yeah. thing that uh, sucks air in and keeps the giant engine cool. I think it might be a Hemi. It might be one of those. And he's got his weird little pointy elbow out the window. Now, this song is from the 70s. Those dudes still exist, and it's the same kind of car. It's the same car. What has, is not the same is Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. Here's the thing. When people in, say in a song or something or in a movie, they're like, ah, oh, Sunset Boulevard. They don't mean the whole boulevard yeah they don't mean sunset and like uh vermont <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is better actually <laughs> it's nicer yeah. over there. they are not referring to the sunset where there's a hotel that is hourly no no yeah the hotels were uh, see when you talk about sunset boulevard i think it mean it matters like what decade it is because yeah. it was hip and cool and like gritty, I think, in the 70s. Yeah. But now it's, there are hotels that are $700 a night and there are very high end restaurants. There's maybe still one strip club. The last time I was, was there, I remember one place. The, the Seventh Vale. The Airstrip? It even had a fancy name. And then there's that diner that looks like a railroad car. Like it's very, it's Disney-fied, but there's still lots of cocaine. Yeah. And the parts that aren't Disney-fied stick out because they're yeah. gruesome. And you're like, oh, that's from the original Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's from the movie. Yeah, we did, a, there did stand up at a hotel in that neighborhood. And while I was doing stand up, it was actually a good show for some stupid reason. I don't know why it was such a good show. The uh, audience was, it uh, doesn't matter. That part's not important. It's important to me. Um, <laughs> while we're doing this show, and then you walk out and you see couples who, I mean, they literally look like they just met going and getting a room. Yeah. Because you got somebody leading the other person by the hand going, come on, sweetie, we'll go up here. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I have the card already. What? Do that. Have fun, sweetie. <laughs> this song is a mess. Okay, I'll, I'll do the next part. Well, let me do this part. Say goodbye to Hollywood. Oh, very important. Say goodbye, my baby. Say goodbye to Hollywood. Say goodbye, my baby. And it's worth mentioning the lyrics themselves, not so much, but kind of, this is very much a 60s chorus. Yeah, it very much, yeah. It lives right up to the impression he's been doing. Yeah. And so does uh, a detail like Bobby, also a name that pops up in a lot of 60s sure. songs yeah. that I'm sure Phil Spector produced. Yeah. Uh, and then right into Johnny. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's taking care of things for a while. And his style is so right for troubadours that got him sitting with his back to the door. Now he won't be my fast gun anymore. Say goodbye to Hollywood, say goodbye my baby, say goodbye to Hollywood, say goodbye my baby. <laughs> Who's Johnny? Yeah. Where did Bobby go? <laughs> Um, I think we're getting uh, uh, vignettes Yeah. Uh, from life in LA. He was there, Billy Joel was there for like three years, apparently to escape a bad record deal <laughs> is what I saw. So he was like, I live in LA, so you can't control what I do. So is he a drummer? Johnny? Yeah, what is he? He's taking care of things for a while. And his style is so right for the troubadours. So I think he's like a manager or a club owner or something. Okay. That's the vibe I get. He's got like the right style for troubadours, which I assume uh, Billy Joel considers himself a troubadour in this case. Yeah. Although I always think of some idiot with a guitar case. <laughs> rather than a baby grand. Um, I also like that Troubadour is a very famous rock and roll club in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, not being referenced here, but maybe o obliquely. Uh, sure. Now, this is what I do not get. They got him sitting with his back to the door. Now he won't be my fast gun anymore. So this is why I was thinking maybe he's a musician because, and I was thinking a drummer, because I was thinking they've got him sitting with his back to the door. So I was thinking maybe he's a musician who's playing for someone else. Mm. And he's, his style is so right for troubadours. He maybe is a session musician, but he's taking care of things for a while. So he's not with Billy Joel in say struggling years, or he's not, so he won't be my fast gun anymore. That's what made me think maybe we're talking about a musician. Okay, I like it. Um, I hear a lot of mafia in this for yeah. some reason. Um, certainly Johnny's taking care of things for a while, very vague, mafia yeah. speak. Um, and famously, if you are watching yourself when you're out in the town as a mafioso, you never sit with your back to the door. Right. You always sit facing the door so you can see who's coming in. But they got him sitting with his back to the door. So he won't be my fast gun. He'll be the last guy who draws his gun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that could very much be it. So I think it's metaphorically, they, they got him to relax. Whoever Johnny is, he doesn't have that. He's not alert and aware. He's, oh. spoiled. he's maybe spoiled and too safe. Yeah. So if he's the club promoter or he's the musician, it works because they got him. like the agent or manager. Yeah. Oh, I could see that. And he's not doing the work anymore. So. Yeah. He's too comfortable. Yeah. So he won't be my fast gun. So uh, I'm leaving Hollywood because of that. I don't know. Maybe. Could be because I'm changing managers too. Because he and and if that is. If you're right, and you very well may be, Billy Joel's had an acrimonious relationship with a lot of different kinds of folks. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And including business managers and managers in general. Yes, um, one who stole millions and millions of dollars from him. Yeah. And then there was like a lawsuit that went on for like 15 years or something. Yeah. But luckily he learned from that and it never happened again. <laughs> yeah. And now he's super careful and, and he doesn't have to work anymore. Yeah. What, how many concerts next year? Yeah. <laughs> he's going on tour later this year. Yeah, uh, I'm kidding. Yeah, it only happened like three or four times. Yeah, yeah, he's fine. <laughs> and he very wisely uh, married a blonde lady in her 20s. So now he'll be fine. Yeah, well, at this point, I think that is wise, right? Because. How much longer are you, you going to live if that's what you want to yeah, do? I mean, it's a version of wisdom. Yeah. I guess. It's, <laughs> she, she's the one who took your order at the fast food place. 
<laughs> the child who's now Billy Joel. Mrs. Billy Joel, yeah. She, uh, I, she's probably very nice. I'm Who sure. am I? Who am I to judge? I think, yes. Or any of us to judge, other than people who notice. <laughs> Which is uh, everyone. I like the, so now it becomes, I think this is where we, the song changes and we've got our little musical detour, right? Yeah, this is where it's like, oh, yeah, it's a Billy Joel song. Okay, good. Now it's a, more Calypso-ish than I would expect or something, right? <laughs> something happened. Yeah. Moving it, on. Uh, huh? Sorry. No, you go ahead. So this is moving on, which, you know, but we're not moving out here. We're moving on. Moving uh, on. Moving on is a chance that you take every time you try to stay together. Say a word out of line and you find out and you find that the friends you have are gone forever. Forever. Wow. That's a. Uh, uh, say uh, a word. I, just, I think he's referring to an incident that he's like, I said one word, and yeah. everybody else would say, like, you were an asshole all <laughs> night long. You said hundreds of horrible things, and you hurt that guy. <laughs> like, what? I said one word. And later on, you realize you also drink a little too much. But right now, we'll yeah. stick to if the. If your friend, the friends you thought you had are gone forever. It's not because you said one shitty thing. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this podcast. <clears throat> so many faces in and out of my life. I like that line, just even isolated. So many faces in and out of my life. Yeah. Boiling people down to just faces. Some will last. Some will just be now and then. Accurate. Like series of hellos and goodbyes. I'm afraid it's time for goodbye again. Oh, that's a great that's a nice melancholy line. There's a lot of uh, distilling things down. Yeah. Life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. Yeah. Yeah. It's also more than that. <laughs> but yeah, it is also that. It definitely yeah. is. And there are, there's definitely been times where I thought, this is something that happened to me recently. I often talk about my two brothers, Bill and my brother, Mike. Bill is the one who took his life. Mike is not the one who took his life. Got um, it. And then one time I was like, oh, hell, I have a third brother. Wow. And that's how much people will kind of walk out of your life of like, oh, right, Steve. I forgot about Steve. <laughs> um, it is weird that uh, this is how he feels about leaving town. It's like nobody, he's talked about Bobby and Johnny, two people that he, me bobby he doesn't know johnny he does and then that's it and everything else is a series of faces and like bright colors and i don't really remember some will be in some will be out life is a series um not a lot of attachment to la yeah i guess it's pretty common i yeah and i guess that also uh lyrically it's good then that we've got Bobby and Johnny is kind of sort of generic names because Bobby yeah. and Johnny could be just all all those idiots. You don't know their names. I'm in the uh, cinematic universe that we enjoy. I like to think Bobby might be the guy from my life who went out there to do stand up <laughs> and is spending all his money on rental cars to try to get laid instead. That sounds like Bobby. Yeah. Right? That would explain his New York name. Yeah. He grew up here and then left. And yep. that's why he's on Sunset. He's probably at the comedy store trying to get on. Yep. And his first couple sets are way too New York specific. <laughs> but you guys been to this uh, pizza place down by UCLA? And they're like, what? That guy brings in his own water. Like, okay. Right. I don't get it. There's a joke about traffic. <laughs> and then say goodbye to Hollywood, say goodbye, my baby. Say goodbye to Hollywood, say goodbye, my baby. It's almost like another song that you would hear. Like an old, like you said, it's very Bill Spectory. It's like a song that's leaking into this song from yeah. the next bar. Yeah. An echo of another time, which is also a very LA thing. So much of it is 
just the city remembering other incarnations of itself. Yeah. Like you go to Universal Studios, it's just, here's a ride about a movie from 14 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Is a mascot of a character from TV, from a show. And just like all these, there's no there there. Have you been to California Adventure? No. Okay. Is so it there, good? There's a part of the landscape that is an ode to Hollywood, exactly what you're talking about. Right. And and I, I enjoy it because I'm like, I've walked here recently. So you know what I mean? I've been in real Hollywood and then now here I am in fake Hollywood. And I walk around and I go, so what would really be here? Well, really, this would be the giant dumb McDonald's. I remember that. <laughs> right. And there's, there's this part, and I feels like they did it on purpose. There's this part with this giant, ornate set of restrooms. They're restrooms, but the architecture is very ornate. And every time I go there and I'm with somebody who lives in LA, I go, isn't this where the Scientology Center is? <laughs> Imagine we're actually in Hollywood. Ha! Huh. Did somebody make that the shitter? And are they making fun? Because if they are, they're a genius. Yeah, fuck, that's great. I swear to God, it's right because I'm like, this would be where the dumb McDonald's is, and right next to it is that Scientology Center where you have to be careful or someone's gonna hassle you for an e-meter, which has right. actually happened to me. No doubt. And and I did not go in. I was like, look, I'm perfectly happy being sad. I'll see you idiots later. Um, but I'm pretty sure that fancy bathroom was the Scientology thing. <laughs> That's worth looking into. Right? Yeah. All right. I'll be out there as soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, what happened? Oh, oh, I think it's your turn. It's the same again. Oh, wow. Moving on is a chance you take every time you try to stay together. That's just math. <laughs> Say a word out of line and you find the friends you had are gone forever. Forever. So many faces in and out of my life. Some will last, some will just be now and then. I don't think he's sad about leaving LA. No. Is the vibe I get. Um, I know that he wrote this song a, a year after coming back to New York, <laughs> so it was not even written in LA. Yeah. It was just about leaving. Um, if he's sad about anything, it's a, a light amount of melancholy for these goodbyes. Yes, for a few people that he kind of knew and like a manager or club owner, <laughs> whoever yeah. Johnny is who I guess was nice to him or was his fast gun yeah. at some point, his wingman, who knows. Hmm. Um, we don't get a lot of, uh, this is what LA was or what I did. He didn't like have a lover that he left behind or anything. No. Just kind of like, these are some things that I saw in LA, now I'm leaving. <laughs> And I won't be back again. The lyrics are aided a lot by the music. The music yes. makes a huge difference with this. Because uh, um, otherwise, I don't know if you know what, what the hell to think of the song. But the song, the lyric, the, the music matches in this case. There's no, there's no peppy, but it's sad lyrics. It's sort of a melancholy 50s slash early 60s song. Yes. That makes it three-dimensional, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. The music by itself, it's like, okay, yeah, you sound like the thing. <laughs> you yeah. sound like uh, the old songs, um, which is great. But to pair it with um, those lyrics, which are also subpar, I don't know, it, it pops it out a little bit. Yeah, there are a couple nice lyric lyrics, but it's very repetitive. It's a yeah. We here's the, a question. Yeah. Why, at one point, do you think you go? You know what I should do? 
a whole album dedicated to 50s and 60s style music. I've never done that before. It never occurred to me. He does, he'd already done that plenty. He's, he'd done a lot of that. He did a lot of like, I'm going to try to sound like the Beatles. Yeah. Uh, a few random choices. I'm going to sound like Sting. Right. Or the Stones. And then a whole album of uh, almost all Frankie Valley. Yeah. And the Four Seasons, uh, who are from Jersey. And a little Jackie <laughs> Wilson. And a little Jackie Wilson. And a little Jackie Wilson. Um, and the net effect of it is you would think like, what, is a, what does a Billy Joel song sound like? And I think there's an answer to that. Yeah. You know, and I think it's almost all stuff that was on The Stranger <laughs> of all things. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. When somebody says like, what's an archetypal Billy Joel song? You would think like, oh, just the way you are. Yeah. See an Italian restaurant. I. Uh for sure. for sure, and then I guess uh, if you were to ask, what's an archetyp archetypical? Huh? What? What's yeah. that from? That's fine. I'm, uh, I'm of a of a Beatles song, and you could pick one, and then at some point you'd acknowledge, well, they went through this giant thing. So I guess yeah. to be fair, an artist is going to do that. It's just funny though that you he keep kept going back to that well. But you know who else did that? Just dawned on me. Uh, John Lennon. Yes. Lennon in his solo stuff suddenly wanted to re-record a bunch of 50 songs. Yeah. I mean, obviously, every musician has a boner for that era because it's the, the source material. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, what's his name? Keith Richards said, like, I stole everything <laughs> from... Uh, B.B. King? Oh, no. Who did he say? I can't remember. But it was similar. It was essentially that. And he's like, look, I'm not doing anything new. Yeah. Just uh, play it faster. <laughs> and uh, our singer is weird. Uh, a lot of lady artists uh, have covered Landslide. And I yeah. think it's a similar thing. You grew up going... Look at Stevie Nicks. She's in control. She's not taking any crap from the boys in the band. She's she's in charge. That's what I want to be. And then you get all these covers. Dolly Parton, of course, another one. If you're a country singer, you're like, I'm covering this. Yeah. I love me some Dolly Parton. And if you're not covering it, you're writing a song that's also heartbreaking. And, and you're writing a song that's not quite Dolly Parton. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, I went through a long phase of listening to a lot of country radio and a lot of it is just moonshots <laughs> coming up short. Uh, like, I'm going to sound like Dolly Parton. And you're like, oh, no, but you're a, a bad writer. Yeah. You wrote bad lyrics and you, now you sound stupid. Your voice is fine. Miley Cyrus is a genius because when she wants to sound like Dolly Parton, it is a Dolly Parton song. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Just go there. Just go to, you know, the pizza place. Don't make a frozen pizza. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah. Here hey, here's a bit of trivia for you. What? Uh, um, how how long have Dolly Parton and Miley Cyrus been friends, and what's the nature of their friendship? Oh, um, I've heard that uh, Dolly's her godmother. That's right. I don't want to give it away in the question. Oh, good. Yeah, that's her godmother. Yeah. I don't know why that came to be, though. I guess she knows Billy Ray Cyrus. Must, yeah. From his one song where he was famous. Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll say one more thing about Dolly Parton, and then we'll get on to trivia and stuff. Uh, there was, I was on some mes message board talking about Miley, Miley Cyrus's cover of Jolene. Yeah. And somebody said in the comments, not ironically, they said, I wish Miley would be more ladylike, like Dolly. Oh boy. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You don't know Dolly, clearly. She has specifically said, 
she dressed up like the fancy ladies of the night who looked so pretty to her. Yeah. And she famously said it costs a lot of money to look this trashy. Yeah. This cheap. This cheap. Costs a lot of money to look this cheap. She made uh, titty jokes for 50 years. Yeah. Um, brilliantly. Yeah. Johnny, do you remember the Johnny Carson joke? Oh, yes. I would, pay, I would pay a year's salary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a different time. Yeah, and you also, and also, if he meant it, she should have took him up on it. He was just asking for a look. That's a lot of money, right? And what did we get? Drew Barrymore and uh, David Letterman. Oh, that's very not bad. the same. No, no, no. Because, because for sure, Dolly's always been driving the bus. Yes, absolutely. And she still, she fucking. Financed the vaccine. Yeah. She's still killing it. She got rid of the Dixie stuff because she was like, because you live and learn. So at Dollywood, she got rid of some Dix Dixie references because she's like, oh, I didn't know that that would hurt some people. So we don't need it. Great. She didn't get butt hurt about it. The best. Yep. She's the best. Now, uh, the picture you already got before we even went on to air. I'll tell you folks. Which is funny because uh, looking at it, you could say like, oh no, that might be any Billy Joel song. Right. Because <laughs> that is New York Harbor, um, which I think comes up in, that picture is taken from the battery. So it could be Miami 2017. Yeah. Um, this could be New York State of Mind. This could be, uh, and so on. <laughs> But that is the Staten Island Ferry behind you. Yes. Which only comes up in one song, which is uh, Everybody Loves You Now. Yeah. And the line is between you and me and the Staten Island Ferry. Yeah. <laughs> so do I. And it's uh, funny because that's off of, not turnstiles, what is that off of? Uh, Cold Spring Harbor? Cold Spring Harbor. And Her I first I studio album? Yeah. And I was like, realized, oh, there are plenty of good songs on that because Everybody Loves You Now is a nice little song. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. Uh, and She's Got Away is beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful song. Um, at least one of those is on Songs in the Attic. I can't remember if they both are. Only She's Got Away. Uh, okay. Because that's yeah. still a thing he'll do in concert. Yes. But I don't think he does Everybody Loves You Now. No. Well, I don't know. I don't think so. She's Got Away is one that you'll still hear at like weddings and stuff. Yeah. So that's pretty yeah. good for a first album. Absolutely. And I say if you're going to get married, have a Billy Joel song because he was great at marriage. Yeah. It's going to work out fine. Uh, <laughs> it just takes practice. That's right. <laughs> uh, she's got a way about her but her brother stole from me is that how the lyric goes yeah she's got a way about her but uh she's almost 40 now i'm not doing that i'm rich now <laughs> oh I, I can't tell if he's a bad person or we are what if it's all of us oh what if all people are bad oh oh i like that better yeah that's good and the trick is to be an acceptable amount of bad. Yeah. Which is, as it turns out, a very hard trick. Yeah. You would think it'd be easier. No. And like some people overcorrect. You got your, you know, your Mr. Rogers is like, no, you're a little more, you could have been a little worse. Yeah. Uh, maybe he was. He could have, yeah. 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 Based on what his children say, I don't think so. No. <laughs> His children are just like, yeah, he was great and he's really nice. And, you know, he, there was this one thing he didn't like. Like, <laughs> like I don't it was know. like Brussels sprouts or something. Yeah. Like, and oh. them, them reaching for something. Huh. Yeah. You don't, I guess that's why. And there have been like a couple of movies about him and they were uh, boring because <laughs> there's no tension or drama <laughs> to be had. Yeah. That's why the Tom Hanks movie had to be more about the other guy. <laughs> right <laughs> you're like oh well, he's flawed yeah okay good yeah um but yeah their, their documentaries is just like well, let's look at another clip this is great 
here's how you make an interesting movie. You know that one movie, One Night in, is it One Night in Harlem? Where uh, um, Miami? One Night in Miami. Miami. Where um, you do that with uh, Mr. Rogers, but it's Mr. Rogers sits down and he has a, a lunch with Hitler. He has a fiction. Oh, yeah, there you go. Right. And you're it's like, a, oh. a fictional lunch that could have happened. Yeah. As far as we know, it's uh, Mr. Rogers, uh, Bob Ross, Hitler, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the devil. And the devil, yeah. The devil, yeah, yeah. And you go away going, when you leave the movie, you're like, no, I, devil was fine. Devil's fine. I don't know why uh, Bob Ross hardly had any lines. Yeah. Mm. I guess uh, it feels like all his scenes were shot separately on a green screen. So they're talking to Hitler and they only talk about his painting? That's weird. I mean, it feels realistic because that's what he'd want to talk about, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, artists. Uh. <laughs> Are you leave. Everybody would leave and like, be googling like did that meeting really happen and you're like that no, doesn't inconclusive it doesn't say it didn't happen yeah <laughs> google didn't disabuse me of my notion <laughs> i did the research right research man people think they do research They're what i do want to know is what city that is behind you i think it's jersey city it might be hoboken oh. So uh, write in the comments what city that is. Yeah. Solved it. It is, yeah. And uh, for what it's worth, I don't know. Yeah. And I should. Because yeah, it is, uh, it's a mile and a half away. That statue seems famous. <laughs> the statue is well known uh, in certain circles. Yeah. <laughs> um, so last week, I had a trivia question in mind, and then a different one came up in our conversation, and I All asked right. that instead. So I'll ask you the one that I had last week <laughs> is how much homework I did. <laughs> I really looked for uh, Billy Joel trivia, and it turns out we've done a lot. Yeah. Already. So you'll remember that he famously was sort of the first American pop star to do shows in the Soviet Union. Yes, I do. And that he did uh, three shows in Moscow and two shows in this other city. Leningrad. Correct. See? Yeah, I did it. Yeah, and I think he also had a song called Leningrad at some point. Yeah, that's why I guessed it. You know, the yeah, song. that's a good guess. Yeah. And, I, and also, it's uh, the other city I can remember. <laughs> Not like yeah. a bunch of Russian cities. Yeah. I thought, I thought Minsk, but that's now that's in a different country now. Yeah. Because of the breakup. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, they, Russia wrote a breakup song about that, right? <laughs> yeah, in the style of Phil Spector. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh God, are you quite all right? Yes. Um, hey, entertain our crowd, I'll get a water. Oh, okay. Um, so there you can see the Staten Island Ferry um, and a chair with a Phillies jacket on it. Um, the Staten Island Ferry takes, I would say 20 minutes to ride from uh, Battery Park at the bottom of Manhattan over to uh, Staten Island where uh, you will dock at the Staten Island dock right next to a little baseball stadium oh. where the Staten Island Yankees play. Oh. The uh, Staten Island Yankees. And then the whole rest of Staten Island, the whole island is a uh, landfill. Yeah, there's no people there. Wow. And yeah. they potentially build on the landfill probably. As soon as they get it like packed down where they like it. Yeah. It's still a little too, it's still too heaping. Yeah, that was, that was good trivia. Now the um, Staten Island Yankees, are they a high school team? They are, I think, a minor league team. Oh. Are they the farm team for the Yankees? I don't know the answer to that. It mm -hmm. seems like they might be, but who knows? I don't understand baseball's uh, feeder system very well. 
Um, the NBA is now modeling modeling a little bit of their system on baseball. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because baseball had, I think it's kind of great because if you're a decent baseball player, but you're not quite ready for the bigs or the show, as they say. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, in basketball, they call it the bigs. And in baseball, it's the show. Same idea. Okay. But if you're not quite good enough, but maybe you could be, a farm system where you can ply your trade and get paid to be playing a child's game that you always loved, I think is quite lovely. And if you like live sports and you want to spend a nickel. Yes. That's uh, great. Difficult thing to do, but yeah, that's great to have. Yeah. So here you could uh, take yourself down to Battery Park City or Battery Park, get on the Staten Island Ferry, which is uh, free. I didn't know that. Ride it over to Staten Island. I'm sure you can get into a Staten Island Yankees game for 15 bucks. Yeah. How is it free? Huh? How is it free? That's crazy. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think it it might be a legal thing where it's like, well, we live in New York City. That's the people on Staten Island. Like, well, you have to get to work. So you can't gouge us yeah you're like all right you can have a weird boat (laughs) but if you want to drive over the bridge that'll cost you yeah that's pretty dope yeah free because that's a thing to do in new york and there aren't a lot of those things free it's great it's a great little cruise of the harbor too and you cruise right by the statue of liberty and there's great vistas so you have to have done that once or twice yeah just for kicks I have. Damn, now Great. Us, we got another thing to do when I come out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Billy Joel, November 5th, back at Madison Square Garden. Okay. Write it in your uh, your joke notebook, but don't do it on stage. <laughs> um, I want to do a song from 52nd Street next week. All right. Called Until the Night. Um, which I realize now as I'm saying that out loud has a similar Phil Spector vibe (laughs) and a 60s rhythm to it. Um, Yeah, but I've always loved that song and it kind of makes you well up and I'm not sure why. So maybe we can explore that. Oh, rad. Okay, so then this week's homework was um, stuff that has that beginning. Yeah. So next week's homework is just uh, we'll both name a couple songs that kind of make us cry. Oh, great! That I'll be ready for. Oh yeah, I I got some. Yeah. Hey. Oh, I got one for you, buddy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I got one. Oh, you're gonna fucking cry. <laughs> you can cry, you little bitch. <laughs> hey, I told you you made me cry once at karaoke. I did, but was it because I hit you? Uh, you, oh, so I guess twice then. <laughs> what did I do at karaoke? You sang Honey by... Uh, oh, yeah, the Bobby Goldsboro. Bobby Goldsboro, and uh, it kicked my ass. <laughs> I was probably cool. had a couple beers, but still. Well, it's a rough song. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some, the only way to listen to that song is to either be willing to cry or be prepared to ridicule it and be above it because those are the only two ways to hear it. But you better be ready, really ready to ridicule it because if you start ridiculing it and then you break into tears, <laughs> you, you lose uh, twice. Yeah. Because you'll certainly be killed. Yeah, you got to do thorough distance if you're going to make fun of yeah. it. You just got to just, yeah. Yeah, you can't do like this fucking maudlin bullshit. <laughs> yeah. It's not you know, a good look. She planted the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess she's into botany or something. <laughs> what is she, a gardener? <laughs> oh, I maybe mean, that's the better way to make fun of it if you're crying the whole time. Shit, that's funny. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, listen, I know that was a lot at the beginning, but I hope you enjoyed it once we got into the song. That's the format. Yes. 
Listen, you don't like it. If you listen to all the way to 29, you will like that. Yeah, that's true. The only people left like this. Yep. So it's only going to get worse.